Hello Sagittarius, welcome to your tarot reading for the week of May 3rd through the 9th. It's Raina. Shuffling the cards. All of a sudden it got really quiet out there. It was all this noise, so it's kind of like, I hope it's not the calm before the storm. Interesting. Okay, so the heart of the matter is the Hierophant card, which does connect with Taurus. We are in the season of Taurus as we speak. Now, um, the Hierophant can sometimes be about marriage issues but also about the issue of conforming. This is um, a card of groups. So we talk about conformity and um, I would say organization. So like if you work in a corporate environment, Sagittarians by and large, unless you have a lot of Capricorn energy, are not going to be like big conformists. They're not um, interested in the tried and true a lot of times. Sagittarians are very independent, and a lot of you, as with me, since I'm one, like to create for yourself. And so, if you're in any kind of job, I mean, you could be um, you could be working in a in a grocery store, and you have ideas of how you can make things better. And if they won't listen to you, and if you're just told to do what what they tell you to do and you can't give any input, that can make you a little bit resentful because you want you have ideas of your own and you want to implement them as you see fit and you may you know meet with a lot of resistance and feel this sense of other people not respecting you for your opinions and what you're about and that could create conflict if if you're in a type of workplace like that and maybe you're even like do I really want to be in this environment because look at what is at the root of this is the six of swords it's like um, leaving conflict behind you so but this conflict could even be within yourself where you feel like you're selling your soul that's how I that's how I would interpret it. Um, <laughs> I spoke too soon. But you know, it's interesting because with Sagittarians being philosophical, money is never going to be the primary motivator in our lives. Although we may want it just like anybody else and we may be happy when we have it, it's never going to be the primary motivator because the house that we rule, the ninth house, is the God house. So it's dealing with the higher mind. And the higher mind is obviously your mental life, which is talking about your intellectual pursuits, but also about the things that move you, that make you, um, that constitute what your life represents to you. So Sagittarians oftentimes will say, what is the meaning of my life? What are the values that I live by? And that becomes very important. And when you're in a corporate environment, there's they have their own philosophy, their own set of values. And if those conflict with yours, you may find yourself in a moral dilemma. And then we have here as the challenge card, the six of wands. But I feel like in this case, it could be your success, which this card represents, or recognition, that is the challenge here because you may be getting a lot of positive strokes. You may be getting people who are saying, oh, wow, you're great, and, and things like that. But you simply are not satisfied, and so you're kind of like torn between, um, you know, wanting that validation 
which is human nature, but also wanting to to strike out on your own. Now, if this is a personal relationship situation, your marriage uh, could be in question. There may be a Leo person who is connected to the situation. Maybe a Taurus, but um, that if the the Leo person might be kind of um, what would you call it problematic for you in some way, and you want to to leave. However, um, honoring your vows may be something that is uh, very uh, important to you now. The the what's coming in is represented by the six of cups, so that is a card of the soulmate. So that might be one of these types of issues, where you have either reconnected with somebody that is your soulmate, or maybe they are they've been in your life for many years in one way or the other. Maybe just as friendships, a friendship or something like that, and you realize that you want to spend the rest the rest of your life with that person. And um, this seems to be a central theme. When I first started doing this a few years ago on YouTube, I noticed that I was getting the Six of Cups all the time. And I was thinking about it. I was thinking, why would it be happening now of all the times? And I think that it's like everything else that is we could call is this spiritual awakening is that people are just like with the the the, the um, question of the corporate environment or you know work environment people are questioning their choices more I think and they they realize that they have no idea how long they're going to be here and it doesn't make any sense to do something that makes them feel miserable and the more that you can look at your life in a very intentional kind of way, very aware, you know, having that awareness of what exactly you're dealing with. In other words, how many people turn away from their lives and just, you know, find some distraction. But actually sit with yourself, sit with your feelings about what is happening in your life and be able to um, take those necessary next steps. I think that that would be wonderful because the outcome here is the world card and that's graduation day. This is the last card of the major arcana and oh look there's another there's a lion like Leo and that looks like that might even be kind of a, a bull like Taurus. Interesting. I have to I really need to um, find out more about these um, symbols but um, the world card is a card of wrapping things up it's the end of the hero's journey or the fool's journey I should say but the hero's journey is a, an archetype too the fool's journey beginning I mean it's our journey through life beginning with the unknown and ending with having that diploma, and that obviously I'm talking about something, um, oh, you know, I just noticed I was talking about something very um, uh, symbolic, uh, the diploma being your experiences in life. But see how that's a, that, that looks like the Kundalini serpent energy. Um, because it's like that's enlightenment. If that if that represents that, I'm sure it probably does. I think the serpent represents wisdom, but the kundalini is the um, awakening, the spiritual awakening. And um, with the with that six of cups, that soulmate card, some of you are at least noticing the contrast between what you have and what you're looking for. So even if there's no person that you're you're moving towards that is a soulmate, Sagittarius. You may have that in the back of your mind that this is the person that you're looking for. And um, 
with the with the professional matters, the six of cups could be that you've held this dream that you've always wanted to do, maybe since you were a child, because the six of cups represents childhood, or you want to become a parent and you don't want to be working 12 hours a day and all that stuff in a corp in, in a job environment that's very demanding. But um, so the world card is about wrapping things up and uh, so that you can move on to that next phase in life. And actually, come to think of it, at the end of May, May 29th to be exact, there's going to be a full moon in Sagittarius. And that could be that uh, world card, the ending, the, the culmination of a chapter in Sagittarius's life. Okay, that's what I have for you, Sag. So if you would like a private reading, there's a link below for that. Have a wonderful, well, I was going to say first week in May, but, uh, you know, this time period in May. Okay, that wasn't too awkward. Bye.